Great job, guys. Welcome to KNN, the Kingdom News Network. I'm Anthony Galang, and this is my co-host, Sonia Klopek. Sonia? Thank you, Anthony. We just came from the second annual AMS conference, World Tour 2. AMS stands for our specialized ministry to people in the arts, media, and sports. This year, the AMS ministries were joined by our Kingdom Song Leaders Conference and our very first KNN Media Forum. We are excited to bring you this edition of KNN from the Upside Down Club in Hollywood, California. Behind us is the all conference band and special guest star, Patrick Griffin, who has written the music score for all of our KNN videos. And now, our first feature story the AMS Conference. last year when first principles and second principles classes were going on I stopped everything I stopped going to auditions I cut loose my agent and I just focused on just my mom getting baptized and my brother-in-law getting baptized and that same month that the first principles were going on I got a call from Amy Heckler and the woman that did Clueless and she just offered me a series regular spot so God really showed me that there's nothing that he can't do as long as you put your faith in him and put him first, he'll bless you. God believes you can do it, so you can do it, even if you don't think so. No matter what happens in my life, as a musician or as just a human being, a regular human being, that God is number one. And no matter what I do, that's good enough. That's good enough. I have nothing to prove to the world except my love for God. I really believe the way to convert uh, more a AMS people is by really changing your own life. See, I believe as the, the more you grow, the more I grow, the more we grow towards Christ, i.e. being humble, and realizing that all we are is a bunch of sinners, and, and the fact is, we are here because we know we need God. Now the man must go to the mountain top. every man must go to the mountain to It's incredible when you really realize that over half the world's population that has ever lived on the planet Earth is alive right now. We're not writing scripture. That's been written. Amen. Amen. We're getting to record the history of the movement of God in our generation. with Kip McKean and his family. Excellence in everything. Before that and before we do a song, I just want to personally thank Kip and Elena for all the help and support, love, inspiration for all of us, but especially here in the AMS. And uh, I, I just feel blessed because uh, they, you know, were, were here at the beginning of the AMS, really worked with Colleen and I for 
a number of years right in there, and you even currently are in the sports entertainment sector. Kip is such a great father, such a great motivator, and Elena is so awesome that we're all going to learn a lot tonight, the need for excellence in our families. Amen. We live at a time that the media has called the new generation, Generation X. It's called Generation X because this generation is yet undefined. It's undefined by the world. And this hour, it still remains undefined by the kingdom. Tonight, it's time for the church to define Generation X. should be a party. Fun, happiness, and my point, lots of laughs. Why can my dad wake my brother and me up at 545 every morning to play tennis without us getting bad attitudes? The reason is because my parents make our lives fun and are some of our best friends. They spend lots of time with us and make sure we're doing all right. Every day, and I mean every day, they tell us, one, they love us, and two, they believe in us. Or in kingdom terms, you're awesome. My point is expectations of greatness. There is a Russian proverb which says, he who takes no risk drinks no champagne. I can still remember playing a basketball game of pig at my old elementary school with Sean, my dad, and Ron Marsh. Then dad said, Eric, take a short shot and play it safe. I said, no way, dad. You have to risk it to win it. <laughs> so I went to the three-point line, shot, and swished. Then Ron tried and missed. I actually won. Dad and Mom have always been challenging me to risk it because I struggle with shyness, belief in myself, and negative thinking. My negative thinking is my biggest problem. Sometimes my emotions tell me I can't do this or that. So when I try, I fail when I think negatively. You know, when I first started playing tennis tournaments, I lost nine times in a row in the opening round. And I wanted to quit. I wanted to give up. Because I'd get all psyched up for this match, okay? And I'd go out there and I'd get my hopes up, and then I'd lose. And then I stopped getting my hopes up, and I'd lose. <laughs> and I'd lose. And I'd lose, and I'd lose, and I'd lose, and I'd lose, and I just got sick of it because it hurt so much. And I wanted to quit. And you know what? I probably would have if it wasn't from the encouragement that I got from my parents and from my coach, Danny, and from my disciple, or Carrie. And that is what's so awesome about having your best friends in the kingdom because they told me that I needed to try one more time, that I needed to persevere. And you know what? I started winning. I started winning a lot. <laughs> but ultimately, after you become a disciple and you know for a fact that all the memories that lie in your future are going to be so awesome, and you know for a fact that all the memories in your past are totally washed away, I want to challenge you to create memories, not just in your own mind, not even only in the minds of your friends and family, but I want to challenge you to create memories that will last for an eternity. Thank you. It's so awesome to talk about God's plan for building solid families, because I do believe God wants us to have awesome families. Amen? 
We're going to celebrate our 20th wedding anniversary in December. My point is, the way as disciples we can have awesome families is to never forget God. God's got to be your best, best friend in your life as a parent. And the goal for each child, as Kip shared about, as they've shared about, needs to be to have their own relationship with God and their own love for the church. You need to not buy into Satan's lie that it just takes quality time to build a great relationship. It takes quantity and quality. When you're powerfully walking with the Lord and talking with the Lord and never forgetting God, your children will be impressed with God. And your children will also be impressive to the world. You see, we've got to address the issue of what the X is going to stand for in Generation X. Will they be exploited introverts or exploring extroverts? Will they possess an exaggerated importance of self or an exaltation of God? Will they have explosive tempers or be examples of control? Will they have expanding waistlines or will they be expanding the kingdom? Will they be exclusive in their race and culture or exert influence against prejudice? Ultimately, the children of the church are either going to extinguish God's movement or exceed all expectation. The call of the hour to the church is to be excellent in everything. Let us pray together. The Los Angeles AMS ministry will always have a very special place in my heart. Since my husband Chris and I were converted, married, and entered the full-time ministry right here in Hollywood. Now our second feature story takes us to the other side of the world, where God is moving powerfully in India, Pakistan, and Bangladesh. I'd like to welcome Raja and Debbie Rajin, our Indian anchors for this edition of KNN. We are here to bring you exciting news. In New Delhi, India, Commonwealth World Sector Leader Douglas Arthur appointed the first elders in a third world church in the modern day Kingdom of God. I flew from Washington to Los Angeles to Hong Kong to New Delhi just to see the elders appointed today. This is a Los Angeles, Hong Kong state of you as his first Indian elder on this glorious day. Amen. When I went uh, first to the church, I saw how much uh, uh, brothers and sisters are very happy there. And uh, that connected me because I was in a lot of sin. And uh, I wanted to change my life and uh, want to become like them. So I decided to become Christian after studying the Bible. Then finally when uh, Ben's brother and his wife changed, I saw their life change so radically. I got curious and asked them what happened in their life. Then. Then told, uh, they told about the church, then I, was, uh, then I thought I should go and see once. Then finally one day we went and next day we studied the Bible. So I was also struggling with this, uh, you know, traditions to give up. But, uh, you know, in front of truth, I had to make a decision. Then we were baptized same day. Yeah, I am happy. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, we're going to give you the Bible now to Ben and John. We're going to give you the it is very excited to be an elder in the kingdom of God. This is not a powerful post. It is a post with humility. And it, it is just like a big dad in the family. He has changed a lot in his life. I appreciate him for the way how he listens to us, the way how he uh, corrects us whenever we are wrong and the way how he is discipling us in our spiritual life. He has done a great part in our life to be really closer to God. I'm really thankful to God for the way how he has changed in his life. Amen. My dream for the churches in India, see India is a big country. India is going to have one billion population. And in future, the greatest church, the largest church, will not be in America, but it will be in India. Everyone's eyes are on 
the Pakistan cricket team to win the World Cup once again. I love the Pakistan cricket team. I think they're awesome. But I think God's team is even more awesome. So get on God's team. Truly, God is working among the women here in a mighty way. Though the women have oppressed and have no freedom in Pakistan, God has blessed us with seven women for the past three months. Well, the first day in Bangladesh was very exciting. As we came into the country, there was a general strike and actually things were quite dangerous and uh, we didn't know that but we were not supposed to travel in a car so as we left the airport in a microvan we uh, reached a place where there was a, a big demonstration and people were very angry that we were actually using a car so they came up to our car with cricket bats really angry and shouting it's a strike, it's a strike and so they were trying to break the windows in order to throw a bomb in our car now we were sitting there with our three children and so we had to run and leave everything. A very small team of about four people came here about six weeks ago. is yeah. very bright for Bangladesh because through God's kingdom there'll be a movement here that starts with just a few but one day is thousands and thousands of people just like we've seen the kingdom in India grow from 10 disciples in one church to now over 2700 Amen. disciples in 18 churches in five countries to God be the glory Amen we just received word that recently all the churches in India had a special invitation service and with 2,800 disciples, they had an attendance of nearly 11,000. Jesus promised that as we go into all the world making disciples, some would go before kings, queens, and princes. Our Spotlight segment focuses on disciples whose lives are impacting people of great influence. Sonia? Last August, a young girl found herself homeless in Hollywood. She had ended an abusive relationship and had stopped taking drugs. Recently, that same person was seen around the world in a picture with First Lady Hillary Clinton. The spotlight is on our sister in the L.A. church, Cindy Williams. I was met five years ago by um, Beth Vanderhoek and uh, Judy and Dennis Vanderhoek. They're also disciples. And um, they invited me to church to a Bible talk and I was not interested at all. But um, my life pretty much didn't go anywhere and I realized that I did definitely need God and it wasn't working my way. So um, I decided that I was gonna go to church and I called uh, Beth's mom, Judy, from that phone right over there and uh, asked her to point me to the nearest church and she told me to go to the Upside Down Club in Hollywood. And I went there and I studied the Bible with Nan and Tracy and BJ and um, I was baptized on September 17th. And uh, I'm really grateful to God for really putting these women in my life and putting the people of Covenant House and the people at the church in my life so that I can um, really change my life around and serve God. There is nothing like the stories of the Cindy's to give us the feeling that there is work to be done and it is work that all of us can be involved in doing. This really means a lot to me to be able to share my life with Hillary Clinton, to be on stage with her. I really thought it was necessary to really share my life with her and to let her know where um, I've been since I became a disciple. Beautiful. These disciples have been a light to the world because they use their talents in the world. Another spotlight story comes to us from Kansas City, Missouri, where Jermaine and Stephanie Peacock became disciples last year. Jermaine has been named a college All-American in track and football, yet his first love is God. We caught up with the Peacocks when they were in L.A. for the National Football League tryouts. About 10 months ago, we had Scott and Lori Bartram. They stayed a catty corner to our apartment, and um, they knocked on our door for about a year, and we was like, man, I wish these guys just leave us alone. 
And uh, we finally went to church and everything, and we really saw what the kingdom was really all about. And, and before you know it, we, we loved it, and we started becoming started coming to Bible studies and Bible talks and, and really, really studying the Bible and really seeing what it really is to be a true disciple. And I'll tell you what, it's, it's been the best decision that ever happened to me and my wife here. I'd like to think that, uh, that I can make it into the NFL someday or arena football or Canadian football, but, but uh, God's in control. I'm not going to um, sit there and say, okay, I'm going to the pros and stuff like that because God is really in control. And once I allow him to take control of my life, he, he'll guide me in the direction that he wants me to be in. Our Spotlight segment concludes with a very special announcement. We have just released our first edition of KNN Kids. Five teen disciples hosted this edition of our Kids Kingdom and Preteen Ministries. Okay, we Welcome to KNN Kids. I'm Anthony, and these are my friends. Andrea. Chapin. I'm Mindy. And I'm Deg. Our next KNN will feature our conference in Paris and our churches in Europe and New England. The death of a family member is always a tragic event, yet God can bring light out of the darkest times. Two such stories come to us from the Pacific Rim World Sector, led powerfully by Frank and Erica Kim. The first story is from our Japanese k and correspondents, Ryo and Mayumi Miao. Erica Kim has been sick with lupus for the last several years, but we are so excited to tell you that her doctor said she has been completely cured. God has healed her. Amen. Amen. And she has another awesome story about her sister-in-law. Erica had lost her younger brother in a car accident last year, but Frank and Erica had decided to invite her sister-in-law Mayo and her little boy Hiroaki to live with them in Tokyo. Finally, Mayo had studied the Bible and become a Christian in March. God has done great things for Erica's life. The second story is told to us by Jim and Karen Beish, evangelist and women's ministry leader of the fast-growing church in Seoul, Korea. Even though Yenju died in a car accident, I'm so thankful to see God working in amazing ways in such an unfortunate situation. Yenju's mom first started studying the Bible. Then her dad also started studying. I'm so thankful for such amazing baptisms. The whole family was deep in sorrow. I was devastated. All the plans that Yunju and I talked about came to nothing. I couldn't bear the shock. Yunju had talked to us about believing in God, and so my wife and I started going to church and study the Bible. After my wife and I got baptized, not only my life, but my whole attitude changed. Even though I lost a daughter, I gained so many daughters in the church. That's why I look forward to coming to church. I'm happy to see Yenju and all the disciples who she brought to Christ. Disciples are always looking for new ways to serve. A whole new era began with the first Hope Bike Race that went from Boston to Washington, D.C. this spring. Simultaneous with Hope for a Million Kids was the first ever Hope for Kids Fund Race a 500-mile bike race from Boston to Washington, D.C. The race, which has already become an official qualifier for the Race Across America, the world's premier ultra-marathon cycling event, began Friday at noon in Boston and continued without a break for over 30 hours. Teams of disciples from Boston took first and second places. We got lost several times, and uh, but no one lost faith. Everyone was hopeful, and everyone had a great attitude. And race also featured some of the world's premier solo ultramarathon riders. I didn't think you could do a race from Boston to D.C. without somebody getting killed, but I showed up anyhow. Teams should contact the Hope Office now in preparation for next year's race and goal to raise $100,000 for the poor. The world's eyes are on Jerusalem this year as the city celebrates Jerusalem 3000, a celebration of King David's founding of this great city 3,000 years ago. The kingdom's eyes are on Jerusalem because of the mission team sent out in June from Los Angeles. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem, the great Middle East is at war. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem, pray for the house of the Lord. Pray for the house of the Lord, pray for the house of the Lord, the great commission.
tears and prayers of the saints are being answered by God. We continue to march towards our goal of planting a church of true disciples in every nation with a city of 100,000 or more by the year 2000. God has blessed us with 245 churches in 90 nations. 79 nations are still waiting. Each of us plays a crucial role in making disciples of all nations in our generation. We must take Jesus' direction and challenge for our own life. As an evangelist, I'm so inspired and convicted by the emphasis on personal fruit by Kip and Elena McKean and all the world sector leaders. We must stay focused on our purpose. The other crucial role each disciple plays is that of a prayer warrior. We may not physically be there in Pakistan or Bangladesh, but spiritually we're making a difference as we pray to God for the churches there. Through the prayers of the disciples, people are now being baptized in Turkey, Morocco, Iraq, and other areas of the Middle East. The African churches are sending out 10 church plantings through the rest of this year. Pray for all these disciples and especially for the new Christians around the globe. Our next KNN will feature the New England Europe World Sector, led by Randy and Kay McKean. Till next time, this is Anthony Galang and Sonia Klopak signing off for KNN. The, the best, best news you'll, you'll ever hear. hear.